Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today I am going to do something radical. I'm probably going to give some of you a heart attack. I am going to prune some of my perennials that are in full bloom, have buds all over them, and absolutely stunning. Yes, I'm going to do it, but there is a reason for my madness, and um, it is a very important reason. So, we are standing here, of course, at the berm, the new berm that is about to celebrate its one year anniversary. We've been here so many times, especially here in the late summer, early fall, because it is just rocking and looking gorgeous. Had our friend uh, Kata, uh, you, I know you know Kata from Walter's Gardens. We talk about Kata all the time. She is our um, friend, our representative from Walter's Gardens, which of course is the home to all of the Proven Winter Perennials. That is where we get all of our perennials from. And Kata is not only um, our sales rep, but she is an extremely knowledgeable gardener with perennials. She lives here in North Carolina, so she knows exactly what she is talking about. She was here this week and she, we were walking through the berm and she gave me some really strong advice, <laughs> encouragement, shall we say, to go ahead and prune my echinacea and my agastache because this is the first year in the ground. So let me show you exactly what we're going to talk about and um, I'm going to show you the plants that we're going to prune and then I'm going to take you uh, plant, basically like type of plant by type of plant and show you exactly how to do it. This is a great place to start because we have both the Echinacea and the Agastache right here together. This is the double coated Raspberry Beret Echinacea, brand new from Proven Winners this year. Gorgeous double bloom. We're gonna take all of these blooms off of every single Echinacea. Every Echinacea that is in the berm, it is coming off, whether it is an old bloom like this that's very much done or a new bud that is just forming or one that is in its prime. Everything's going to get cut back as is the Agastache. This is the meant to be royal raspberry. I mean a gorgeous plant. I adore this plant. The pollinators adore this plant. I've got bumblebees and honeybees and all sorts of great beneficial insects, wasps on these plants right now. We're going to cut this basically all the way to the ground. Now he might be looking at this gorgeous plant and going, woman, what in the world are you doing? Like, why would you cut these beautiful perennials that are in bloom and have buds on them? Why would you be cutting those back? Very important reason. Both the Echinacea and the Agastache, because this is the first year in the ground. Only going to do this when they are going into their first winter. We're cutting off the blooms, we're cutting them back because we want all of the energy of this plant to go into the roots. We do not want energy going up into the foliage of the plant and producing flowers. We need all of the plant's focus to be on producing really strong, deep tap roots. Both of these plants, Echinaceas, Agastaches, will form really strong, deep tap roots. That's what makes them so um, drought tolerant, heat tolerant, is because they will form these great roots. It's kind of like disciplining your child. <laughs> it hurts in the moment, but in the long run, it is best for them. So that is what we're gonna do to these plants. Cut them back, and again, show you step by step what I'm going to do with those. Now, that is those two plants, the Echinacea and the Agastache, that is, mainly for the horticultural reasons. Again, and, and Kata told me, she's like, Jenny, I know it's gonna hurt. It's, it just seems crazy, but you're gonna do it anyway. And I said, yes, ma'am, I sure am. Um, also, the we've got, we've got several echinaceas in here. This is the, um, oh gosh, the name just re literally just went out of my brain. This echinacea, <laughs> here we go, here we go, I see it. Uh, Look at that, I do love this one. Yeah, the fuchsia is bright. There we go, ha ah, this early in the morning, y'all. Same thing on the fuchsia is bright. Old blooms, good sized blooms, buds, everything coming off. I will show you step by step what we're gonna do. We're also gonna come down here, and this is more for aesthetic reasons. Um, this is my chartreuse on the loose, the Nepeta. Now it is, she's looking rough, right? I mean, she, it, it, it's bad, but, down deep in, in the center, we've got new growth coming. So we're gonna come in here again, show you exactly how to do it. We're gonna prune all of this back. Same thing with my Minarda. 
we're going to clean it up that way it can flush out and put more energy into the roots and if it has time to flush out some new growth then that is amazing we'll do that as well and then we're also going to this is just more again on the aesthetic side of it we're going to clean up our shasta daisies so this is daisy may and you can see this was her second flush of flowers and she's done right she is unsightly not looking well so we're just going to take all of those stems off of her of course leave the foliage when we're done it'll pretty much look like these two guys right here we'll have a nice little mound of green and that will um all will be well on that now if we wanted to we could come through and deadhead our pugster butterfly bushes this is pugster pinker today i'm not doing that uh, that is not going to be my focus today my focus is on the perennials let me show you this this is this is the one that's going to hurt the most i think is my <laughs> oh my meant to be queen nectarine look at that y'all is she not stunning i mean i adore this perennial it has got those beautiful nectarine flowers on it those pink calyxes calyx is what holds the plant on not the plant the flower on um but yeah we've got those then the one in a melon echinacea clean all of that up and while we're here we probably for aesthetic reasons as well we'll go ahead and cut back my baptisia right here because you can see it is it's thin it's kind of floppy over especially as we go here behind the holy grail and the niagara falls we're just going to cut that back again aesthetic reasons that is not necessarily for the the root growth although it will certainly help the root growth on that so we're going to take care of all of those I will take you, like I said, plant by plant, um, not every single plant, but like I will show you exactly how to do the echinacea, exactly how to do the agastache, how to do the nepeta, so forth and so on. And I will show you exactly how to do it. And we'll talk about more in depth about each plant. But if you have planted this year, this spring, summer, fall, and you have planted echinacea or agastache, you need to do this to your plants. Therefore, they will produce really strong, deep tap roots, which is going to ensure that they survive the winter and that they have a long, long life going for many years to come. So without further ado, let's get going. First plant of the day that we're going to prune is the Agastache. Now, this is going to be painful for some of you to watch. So just know long term, it is what's best for our beautiful little plant right here. Mimi is helping me today in the garden and so she's up at the tippy top and I demonstrated on the uh, other Agastache and um, she was like oh, you're cutting it back that far yes yes I am so what we're going to do is we're going to take our Agastache and we're basically cutting it to the ground we're going to take all of this beautiful foliage and we are going to completely take it out and it is going to go down to bare bones so all of that gone. Now, what you can do, makes you feel a little better, is, you know, use it as cut flowers, put it in a vase. Um, I would think y'all are much smarter than I am. I'm sure you could probably dry the Agasaki and use it for different things. Um, or you can just throw it in your compost pile. It's okay, it's all right. So we're going long-term here and we are cutting it all the way back because Yet again, the reason we're doing this is we want a really strong, healthy root system so that this plant will last us for years to come. It will survive our historically wet winters. And um, yeah, so we're going to come in here, get all of that. There you go, y'all. Just a little tea tiny nub. That's all we got left. So think long term, right? It's gonna be hard for some of y'all, I get it, but what's best for the plant? All of the Agastache will get that done. I only have the queen, neck to be, queen nectarine and the royal raspberry up there. So those are gonna be the only ones that get cut as far as like, that's the only Agastache I have in here. So that is how you cut your Agastache back to the ground. Those stems may be six inches long, six to eight inches long, and that is it. All right, moving on to the next plant. Echinacea. Next on the list is Echinacea. Echinacea is not going to be as traumatic of a cut, but it is still going to be a little hard to see all of these beautiful flowers go. 
anything that has any stalk that has a bud on it whether it is one that is you know looking pretty good but a little you know has a little wear and tear on it or ones that are obviously very gone right so that's completely brown you got the seed heads on it or if you have one that is a bud that is still forming all of that is going to come off and you're simply just going to go down as far as you can in the plant and take those uh, flower stems slash stalks off again why do we do this i can't reiterate this enough because i know this is going to be hard for some people <laughs> is we want really great strong root growth and we want um, these plants to form those nice deep tap roots that are going to ensure their survivability for the seasons to come now again you don't have to just toss these you can easily put these in a vase um, and save them for cut flowers if you want to these are looking a little rough for a flower but just getting in there there's no need to worry about the foliage as far as taking back foliage it is simply the blooms that we want all of those blooms to be gone so take off all your echinacea blooms for your first year plants so we have covered the two perennials that from a horticultural standpoint you definitely need to prune your first year now we're entering into the phase of for appearances sake here i have a baptisia i have one two three four of them right here beside of me Baptisias, of course, are those amazing, uh, beautiful, gorgeous, stunning, all the adjectives to describe this perennial early, early spring bloomer. They have very upright vase-like habit. Um, these guys, like all your perennials, well, the vast majority of perennials, right? I think all perennials, are going to die completely down to the ground when the freeze comes. So I'm going to have to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and get a head start on it and clean it up and get this out of the ground so again not hard y'all literally taking your stalks and cutting them basically flush with the ground yes baptisia have really nice deep tap roots um, so when you're planting your baptisia you really want to think about you know where do i want to have them and keep them in that spot um, you know for because they're harder to move because they form those really, really deep tap roots. So just cut them to the ground. You can do this anytime between now and um, when you have um, a hard freeze and they're completely dead. So whichever one you wanna do, you go ahead and do that and the plant will be gorgeous. You don't get fall color from Baptisia, so there's no need to keep it around. Unlike my Amsonia that is right here beside of me, it will give me gorgeous fall foliage color. So I don't want to cut it now because I want to keep it for the fall foliage. So Baptisia, if you want to, if you need to, you can go ahead and cut it to the ground. Doing it here, my Baptisia at the house is beautiful and upright and nice and full. I'm going to leave it alone. It's totally up to you. Okay, my friends. So here I am beside the new Nepeta from Walter's Gardens. This is Chartreuse on the Loose, a beautiful, Nepeta that is a continuous bloomer and has of course that bright chartreuse color on it it was glorious it's seen better days hence why we are here deep down inside of there there is new growth we're going to give her a really big haircut walters was very kind and generous and sent me <laughs> these plants um early this spring and they were ginormous i mean that is the only word that i can use to describe them they were already practically full grown this is the first time that i have pruned them looking back clearly i should have done it earlier but you know what it's all right we're going to take the nepeta um, and i'm not i mean i am cutting it severe but i'm not going to take it literally all the way completely back so you'll see here in just a second I'm gonna have a nice little mound. You will also notice that I am not being strategic on my cuts. I am just going in there and giving this chartreuse a really, really good overall haircut. Go around 
the edges like this. Think of a bowl cut, right? All the way around, get all of that cleaned up. And then we're gonna come back and make sure that the top, kind of pull it up like a ponytail. We've talked about this before with grasses and different things and giving a nice little cut off the top. Depending on the weather, we are in North Carolina after all. And so we are, um, we're finally getting some cooler weather today. That's why it just feels glorious out here. Um, but this should reflush before my hard first hard freeze comes. So I should get a nice, really pretty nice foliage mound again. The blooms, we'll see. I don't know, this is my first year growing the chartreuse on the loose, but should get a reflush of flower, I mean, um, foliage on here. Nice little mound. In fact, remember, we just had that great delivery from Walter's Gardens with all the perennials for the signature garden and I got Cat's Meow Nepeta and they had just really pruned theirs. So with the Nepeta, it does respond really well to that periodic shearing back throughout the season. So I've got one done, I've got four more to go and then we're going to hit this Monarda because the Monarda, oh bless her heart, that raspberry, she's looking rough. She needs a little TLC as well. Next on the aesthetics list is the Monarda. Monarda, this is Leading Lady Raspberry, probably my favorite Monarda uh, because it is nice and petite. You've got dead foliage, pull that out. Um, it is petite, it is not going to be a super tall Monarda, so it's not gonna overtake the garden. However, it also does gorgeous raspberry blooms on it that of course your pollinators, your hummingbirds, butterflies, all the fun things in the garden enjoy. Now, Monarna will spread naturalize. It is not nearly, the leading lady raspberry is not nearly as vigorous of a naturalizer as say the um, Jacob's Klein, which is an old timey Monarda that would just naturalize, take over an area. So your mound is going to spread, but it's within the area. It is not going to send out crazy runners. I'm not going to have one popping up in the middle of my grass or the middle of my honeysuckle. It's just going to form nice big mounds. I planted these relatively close to each other because I want this to be a big block of raspberry monarda when they are in bloom. If you've got some foliage that just pulls out, just go ahead and take that off clearly. And then anything else, we're just gonna take it back to the ground. This again is purely for aesthetics. It is not for really horticultural reasons. It's just looking a little rough here in the middle of September and I wanna clean the plant up. So that's what we're gonna do, just clean it. You're probably gonna have some new growth that's gonna pop out. And that's fine, right? I found with Monarda for us in North Carolina Zone 7B that I will keep a low mat of foliage even throughout the winter. So I will still be able to see where it is. It will not completely disappear like say a hosta will. So we're just gonna go through, clean it up. And I believe, I think this is the last one that we have to do. Um, and then I'm gonna show you what everything looks like once we get done. All right, my friends, so today's project is complete. Ah, and it's lovely because we have cool, dry air. We didn't even break a sweat. How fantastic is that? It's wonderful. So the cleanup we did certainly makes the bed look a lot neater and a lot tidier. Yes, it was, it was not easy for me to especially cut back that Agasaki because, man, in her absolute prime. But just like I said with parenting, you gotta think long-term and that's parenting and that's a child calling me right now. Hold on, be back in a second. All right. Sorry for that interruption. So let's take a look and see how everything looks now that it is pruned back and cleaned up. Um, I enlisted Mimi to do a little weeding on the backside for me, so she's helping me out. Gorgeous foliage, right? Look at that echinacea. That is that double-coated raspberry beret. Um, yes, the blooms are gone, but you still have that beautiful foliage. So that's what we're gonna hang on to, folks, y'all. We're gonna see the positive. Agastaki, yeah, well, she's just gone. It's, you know taking it back to the nubs and let those roots get nice and strong and happy and healthy. Gardening teaches you patience and that is what we're going to do even, um, yeah, even Miss Brenna is checking it out. So Agastaki is gone, so let's walk on down around here. 
Things that we're going to wait as we're walking down, things that will be pruned later. Do not cut your Russian, Russian sage. Leave that alone. Your sedums, right, because they are fall bloomers, so leave those alone. Russian sage, you don't prune back until um, the spring. When you start to feel some heat coming on, then you can prune those back really nice and hard. Leave those alone. The artemisia, the, this is the new silver lining. It is looking rough. Kata advised me to wait um, about a month before I prune it back hard. So I'm gonna wait because she was afraid if it flushed out, then we got a hard freeze, it could put too much stress on the plant. So we're just gonna wait until cooler temperatures really arrive and leave it alone until then. But as we move on down, right, so all of the, we've got echinaceas in here. Again, nice, beautiful green foliage. You can see the plant nice and happy all the way down. And then this just looks better. I know that it looks like nothing's quote there because um, pretty much all the foliage is gone, but the chartreuse on the loose, it was just looking bad. And I would rather have a freshly pruned mound than a um, plant that looks like it's dying even though it's not dying so there you go and then of course the monarda back there i really suspect that we'll get a nice new flush of green on all of this whole section um, within the next coming weeks and so that will kind of fill in right there as well uh, mimi got ahead of me on the daisies which was totally fine um, but you can see she just she just deadheaded it right so you just had those nice beautiful mounds right there no no blooms as far as they weren't even blooming so it was all the old dead blooms so that is gone quite nicely and then moving on down here as we go same thing more echinacea the agasaki all of that is completely cleaned up you don't even know that the baptisia was back here right because it is um, all you see are those gorgeous grasses that's niagara falls this might be my new favorite grass, y'all. It is stunning, of course, with the Holy Grail. Holy Grail, very, very happy. You give it sun, you give it consistent water, and it will bloom for a very long time. The one in the melons are all cleaned up. And then even as we come down here, we got also the, um, I forgot to show you, but down here was the double coated and this was the butter pecan. So it had a it had a good bit on there and butter pecan has been taken back as well. So that is basically our task for today. We're gonna go uh, have some fun, just Mimi and I, in the back garden and just garden for the fun of gardening and we're not gonna film. So, um, you know, sometimes when you, <laughs> you know right like if you're if you're a baker or you're a chef or you're a whatever sometimes you just enjoy doing your job just for the sake of doing your job and not for performance so that is what we're going to go do we're going to have go have some mommy daughter time in the back garden with uh the fluffy fur ball that will join us i am sure as well so we're going to have some fun today on this gorgeous cooler drier weather uh finally has started to arrive in north carolina I'm sure it won't stay but we're going to appreciate it for today so as always Thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. I know it's going to be hard, y'all, but if you've got first-year Echinacea Agasaki, go ahead and prune it. You'll be grateful later on in the coming years, I promise. As always, we appreciate you. Thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. See you in the next video. Bye, friends.